Gallifrey's Most Wanted. I'm Ross Aiken. I'm old who. The only electrical activity round here takes place in your overheated brain, Mr. Ludgate. And I'm Victoria Wheeler. I'm new who. To judge by the clothes, the unexpected arrival, and the manner of your greeting, I can only conclude that I know exactly who you are. <laughs> I take it as a... And we are back to the six to 60s time, which I always look forward to because we're doing Big Finish with the amazing Maggie Staples, our own Evelyn. And this one's even more special because it has a boo-goo in it. <laughs> Something me and I never knew. And um, we'll make, just hearing the word fugu makes me want to watch an old time team. But the specter of Lanya Moore with where the Sixth Doctor meets the Brig. So let's jump to our synopsis from the Big Finish Companion Guide, and then we'll be back. The Specter of Lanyon Moore. Big Finish, Main Range, Number 9. Writer, Nicholas Pegg. Director, Nicholas Pegg. Producers, Jason Hay Gallery and Gary Russell. Executive Producer, BBC, Jacqueline Rayner. Released June 2000. The TARDIS is drawn off course by a psionic field, and the Doctor and Evelyn find themselves in an area of Cornwall rich in archaeological finds. Go to the nearby Lanyon Moore Archaeological Institute for more information, and there the Doctor meets Brigadier Lethridge Stewart, who is looking into recent deaths at the latest in a long line of deaths and mental breakdowns associated with the legendary specter of Lanyon Moore. In the distant past, two Trigaeans, brothers Sancreda and Scarfin, are surveying the icy planet Earth when their ship is called back by the Trigaean High Command. In the blizzard, Sancreda is delayed from reaching the ship by wild animals. He shoots blindly into the storm and watches in disbelief and rage as the ship takes off, abandoning him. The doctor realizes that the Lanyon Moor must be host to, tri to a Trigaean whose ability to use minerals to focus mental power is causing the death and madness. The doctor is proven correct when an archaeological team unearths Sancreda, who has been dormant for th tens of thousands of years. Desperate for revenge on his brother, the alien summons his survey ship back to Earth. When it arrives, however, it is empty, and hearing the Trigaran story, the doctor realized Sancreda must have shot and killed his brother when firing into the blizzard at the wild animals. Driven insane by the length of time he had been semi-conscious, Sancreda then decides to use his vast psionic powers against the Earth and blast it to atoms. The Doctor and Evelyn flee Sancreda's spaceship, but the Brigadier struggles with the Trigaran before he too flees the ship. The alien powers up the ship's weapons, but as it operates them, they backfire, destroying the Trigaran and his craft. The Brigadier explains that he swapped a component in the ship for a piece of wire in his struggle with Sancreda. With Earth safe once more, the Doctor, Evelyn, and the Brigadier return to Landing and Moore for supper. A great synopsis by the amazing Richard Dinkins in The Big Finish Companion, Volume 1, with a forward by Colin Baker, and an afterword by David Warner. Uh, Mike, if you can find these somewhere, I had to get mine on eBay. They're great. Um, and Big Finish, do another one. Okay? We need a third and a fourth. These are great. I love a good. I love me a reference book. All right, now back to the action. Well, I'm glad we're back with uh, uh, this one. This is one I love. Every time I listen to it, I go, God, I remember when I got this in the mail because I was a <laughs> subscriber. I was living um, on this uh, Vic. We'll know this house on Hanover and Thompson uh -huh. in Richmond, and I would get. I I. I Upstairs or downstairs? No, 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 no. Not the Hanover and uh, the, no, the one that lived for ten. The one I moved oh, out to. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one where oh. Daniel, my nephew, lived across yeah. the hall from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would get him in the mail. I got the first two years as a subscriber, and then wow. for a couple of years after that, I got him from uh, Who North America, and now I just uh, I I just get him I just get him on my phone. The app is a, is yeah, a lifesaver because the number I got <laughs> is so bad. Here. So, but I love these early ones. Uh, we come back to them a lot because we're covering. Um, this is before any eighth. This one came out before any eighth Doctor stuff came out. But we're getting Did close it. to where mm -hmm. they're both yeah. coming out at the same time. Um, right, those came out, but the eighth Doctor ones are in the 
twenties, right? They had done about twenty. Yeah, yeah, it's like eighteen or nineteen. I'm, I'm, yeah. I could look it, but I, I, no, no, the no. Books, but they the book they were doing a... the main range, big finish main range were fifth, sixth, and seventh Doctor stories, yeah. right? Until hold on, and um, no, it's fine. But um, so, and it's great because those are all these sort of truncated seasons, right? Like we're coming up to the end of seven. We're coming up to, I mean, we've only got a couple more cycles before we're done with seven. We've got a few more. We're already done with six. We've got a few more. <clears throat> we got to have at least a half a season or more of Fifth Doctor. Yeah, it's weird how they, they well, we we sped up. We could have done, I think, do we did Trial of Time Lord as one story because it is one story. But Right. Yeah. But, right. Yeah. but it's only really three arcs, right? Four if Four. you count the final two. Right. But um, no, with Fifth Doctor, you know, Fifth Doctor has a couple of two parters. Yeah. And it has seven stories in a season. Yeah. Me and me and uh, Jeff just uh, covered uh, season 21 and I could, mm -hmm. we were giving our ratings and then he was like, going, oh, you missed one. And went, it's seven. It's like, oh, it is. It's six Davison stories and one Collins story. Right. So, um, but we've yeah. already done. Yeah. So. <laughs> So we're coming up to the end of them, and then we get this second bite at the at the apple. We get a creative team that that feels as we do that these guys got short shrift. Yeah. Right. That they knew that um, in the first instance. Um, I mean, the the first thing that they knew is that something really special was happening with the Seventh Doctor era right when it was canceled yeah and so the impetus to continue on that journey is great but uh also that you have because if you've been in a room with them um and and i think you can probably guess it from watching even if you haven't um that colin baker is a superb doctor oh yeah right and that he's a superb actor a man of great intellect and um and has the ability to really bring a lot to the doctor. Um, and that uh, Peter Davison is, uh, is a grand actor. Yeah. And that they could just give stories to these, to these doctors who just have gotten all the bad press. And they don't deserve it. Yeah. And I think because of Big Finish, it's allowed people to do what – I think I know where you're going to – to reevaluate these eras because Absolutely. we get to see them work with different with more material we can the stories can be bigger and fuller because they don't have to build the set or the dodgy costume right well but we've been to we've been to cons and you see a lot of people cosplaying as sexy there's yeah. a huge big finish and 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 sexy and and the convention circuits have yeah. made him one of the favorite doctors yeah for a I lot mean, of people the, cosplaying it that makes sense right because it's not just a scarf and a hat right it's Please. it's a really big deal costume and a lot goes into it and it's colorful and it's fun and but i don't think we'd see nearly as many of them if it weren't for big finish no i don't think we would i think big uh, i think big finish is given uh, colin baker Gave him the chance that his his own employers didn't give him originally, and not yeah. and I'm not going to say and I think that is nothing against John Nathan Turner. It's against Michael Grade. It's it's people yeah, higher it's, up quitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, um, and you know, uh, well, Michael Grade. There's all is, sorts of things that go into the decisions around uh, what has to be a money making venture. Yeah, yeah. These are all business and decisions and they're business decisions and business and art can sometimes be. A, and this is a perfect example. The one we're talking about right now, because nobody. In a bean counter accounting mindset would cast Evelyn. Oh, you would never have a, a middle-aged woman companion. Never. Never. It's a we didn't genius have a, we idea. We didn't though. have a male one until Graham. Oh, yeah, but yeah. you've got somebody in Evelyn who will call the doctor on his shit in a real and commanding way. She's amazing. Right? And listening to this one is there are moments where 
she's talking about breaking the window and climbing through it. Uh-huh. And when she's being tortured, when she's being threatened by the bad guy in his uh-huh. bu- his gold, the best Goldfinger kind of scene. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, um, she's so good. There is the um, and as we do these, I've never just sat down and listened to Evelyn's in a row. It's always been jumping around. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, sometimes I go, I want to listen to the Evelyn as an arc because she has an arc. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they're major stories that I'm become always important. surprised. I'm always surprised at like how intense her art gets. But she she's a relatively intense person. I I am I still can't get over the fact that I'm the currently the age that she's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> coming up I'm it. older. I was listening to this time and went, I'm <laughs> not older than the actor. No, no the no, actor no. when she did it was was young, was older than we are now, but she was portraying somebody who's actually our age. And I'm like, I'm not that funny, daddy. But, <laughs> but, um, the you're a little, there's a little session, Evelyn in you, though. Oh, there's a lot oh. of Evelyn in me. I'm just not that funny, daddy. Right? Like, so, but yeah, I love me some hot cocoa and, um, let me loose in, uh, in an architectural gem from the Tudor era. And um, leave me alone in their library to do some history research, please. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it would be like my greatest dream, and I'd have similar problems breaking the glass. But man, I wish I was as much like Evelyn. She has a couple of things which she says um, when she is locked in and prisoner of a madman and he menaces her and leaves she says okay pull yourself together you've seen this movie what happens next you escape mm-hmm. and uh i know it's fiction but damn i was like i don't think i get there that quickly <laughs> <laughs> It's it is she. I, when I listen to this one, I listened to this one when I was commuting uh, in the morning and afternoons, and a little bit when I'm walking the dog. And these big finish because I listen to my, the most recent big finish, and and I'm not saying they're better. It's just they're different. They're a little more complex. They're a little more confident in what they're doing. Twenty some years later, or yeah, twenty two years later, uh, that this one is you can close your eyes when you listen to this era of Big Finish and you can see a tele, a 25 minute episode in your brain. It is very, not basic in a bad way. They're mm-hmm. not, pu- they're learning to push the envelope. Yeah. yeah. But you could close your eyes and see this being shot. I see a lot of the sets from um, Terror of the Zygon when they go with Sarah Jane's in that yeah. library. I see that yeah. set in my head. Yeah. Um, I see the brig in him walking through any random moor, <laughs> you know, random yeah. Welsh hill, um, doing all of it. And, you know, I see, I just watched... Uh, I think it's Cornwall, is which it is Corn- a, which is adjacent to Wales. And I think that's not even, a, I think it's more of a Welsh accent on the Professor Morgan, is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it I think it's a, more of a Welsh accent than it is a Cornish I could show one. you a Cornish accent. I don't think I know my ear. I don't think that's an accent that's really in my ear. Um, it's the one that all pirate accents are said uh, to they, uh, send from, right? Because Blackjack, uh, Blackbeard, there's my dog being a nut. She's not right. I don't know what's wrong with her. She's not right. She wakes up at three o'clock in the morning now. What, Freya? Yeah, doing that. That same, like, alert. Uh, it sense the donkeys moved in next door. She uh, must smell something. I don't know. Okay. So I can't tell. But um, but yeah, so the Cornish one is like that Blackbeard I got you. accent. I right? remember. The lot of... What was that? Cold Comfort Farm? Yeah. yeah. I remember that when that came out, and uh, they all had the Cornish accent, Ian McKellen, too. And I went and saw it in a theater here in Richmond called the West Hampton, and they had signs all over the door. We will not refund your money for not understanding what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, Cornwall's fantastic. Yeah, I would uh, like, you know, there's place, I, that's one of the places I really like to go. I mean, yeah. I, I want to eventually take 
trips yeah. and just but just do sort of spot things like I want to do the Hebrides the Outer Hebrides and I, I want to do just a trip to Cornwall because um, I've decided I don't want to spend much time in cities anymore for the rest of my life but I do want to um walk places right so i want to do walking tours and you know like yeah and, and go near tintagel and right but, yeah me and dexter years ago where we we're sitting between rehearsals at a theater yeah. it, it, then we said we would if we we're both healthy enough walk uh hadrian's wall hadrian's wall yeah, yeah that's that, my you know that's my favorite picture of my mom is standing at top. she's standing at top hadrian's wall yeah i could see her holding back the hor the hordes yeah <laughs> said do a better job than either one of us but um Anyway, there were, and there are great lines in this one too, right? Like uh, somebody says, and I think it's Evelyn talks about, uh, is it Morgan's uh, ancestor having a cavalier attitude? Yeah, yeah. It's so good, so good. Somebody's like, uh, it's on the side of the of the royals during the English Civil War, and having a cavalier attitude. It was just. This is a little toss offline. It's just great. Yeah. So I, the other thing, you had mentioned it, but I, re, I remembered when it happened this time. Um, I was not looking at um, covers of things um, when I listened to these the first time. Yeah. I had them, um, you had them. Um, had downloaded them off a CD and I was listening to them um, from those downloads. So I wasn't looking at cover art. And so when the brig walks into the room the first time. Oh, you didn't know. <clears throat> I didn't know. Oh, man. And so I was, I remembered that emotion from the first time I'd listened to this a couple of years back. Um, and so experiencing that again was so, such a happy experience. Yeah. Right? I love every that time, moment. I love yeah, that moment. Every in this. Time that, uh, and uh, this has happened, I think a good deal because, um, because I've digitally streamed ev everything, almost everything, mm -hmm. um, on these, um, in watching old who and so and have never been forewarned the first time we just did modern on undead hey so i wasn't forewarned that the brig was in that one yeah um, when i when i watched it right i didn't and even think of that because i knew advance <laughs> because i was getting the magazine you're getting the magazine and i was getting these things after they had aired the only thing i for the first thing and only thing really for a long time i got in real time was five doctors because it aired on pbs in america before it aired in england yeah okay it, yeah. it aired on the anniversary date yeah yeah so they got it, it was, the next day it was a great it was just such a pleasant warm feeling it's it was it, it is and he it's such a great moment where he goes he goes the, when the doctor says hello and he goes well hello doctor oh. he goes you know it's me he goes from your costume and your general manner, manner, manner. Yes. I, yes, I think. <laughs> it's great i mean this is a classic um setup in some ways it's a little base under siege right it's a little third doctor unit it's a little yep. it's a very gen, I've, in a generic just been in it it's a very generic kind of doctor who plot and story but it's so well acted yes you know yes. and that's what i was kind of saying at the beginning is it's not it, it is it's a nice tight script nicholas Pegg wrote it uh and he's written some good stuff um well, look, you you literally said i pictured m myself in this library i pictured myself in a different library right it comes to life it does in a really incredible way right like we're talking this is all and know in the uk they have a better relationship with radio than we do in the u.s oh yeah i'm but gonna talk about is, that later too this is a lost art for us to be able to bring things to life on the radio um the, to do radio plays is um, particularly it would have been a real dearth in 1990 or whatever when this was done. It was a 2000. dead art. 2000? 2000. Okay. It, it was a dead art. And so we, we are um, 
Yeah, it was recorded in February of 2000, released in June. So we we would be, I don't know, just where I was transported, and um, and and old friends showed up, right? Like it was it was this overwhelming sort of experience. The, and I'm talking about the first time I listened to it. This was one of the ones I loved. Marion Conspiracy because a Evelyn, b real historical, right? There's, there's so much really good stuff going on in it. Little timey wimey, but really good. And um, but this one just transported me to a place. It was a classic Doctor Who story, but much like we had like with Barry Letts and stuff, you, you would be you'd you'd watch a, a a story and you'd be like, oh yeah, this is during like. Three Mile Island and other nuclear plant accidents. And so, of course, they made this one make sense, uh, right? Like inspired, we call it now ripped from the headlines, right? Yeah, yeah. But 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 inspired by things that are going on. And this one is absolutely, uh, somebody got sucked down a time team rabbit hole, you know, oh, yeah, and, yeah, was, yeah. and was like, wouldn't it be cool to set a Doctor Who story where they're looking at a fugu? Right. And there's all these words that I first heard from Tony Robbins. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that made it so much fun. Right. And you have the wealthy benefactor and you have right. There's so many classic elements of a Doctor Who base under siege story wrapped in a I got inspired from watching X. Right. Yeah. And, and and then there's Evelyn who. um Unlike, uh, I think one of the things that I wanted to mention about Evelyn is that there's a companion role, right? That we that the companion keeps the doctor something, right? Either reminds the doctor of his humanity or keeps him grounded or... But what she does is give you the sense that she would behave this way with or without the doctor in her life. Yeah, it's an element that you see in companions like her, Sarah Jane, yeah. Leela, Barbara, Vicky. Yeah. Um, yeah, I you mean, know, I and, would, and that's just I a would, classic. I mean, they're and they're, you know. Yeah, this is the and that's the difference. I, I would say that this story helps. You know, we often say that Ace gets us Rose, right? Yeah. That, that without Ace, we wouldn't have had Rose. We, but really because and i think what grosses people out about rose is that the ace doctor is a familial relationship it's a very paternal relationship right he touches her he loves her and cares about her in lots of ways but also challenges her he's and, a mentor and a father he's a a, right and exactly. a teacher and a teacher and that's what's oogie about the t about 10 and rose right that it's not a mentor relationship, that it's that it's <laughs> we're used to it being paternal. And it's not, you know, it wasn't with Sarah Jane because she wasn't having it, right? It no, wasn't she, with yeah, Barbara. but Sarah Jane's closer to the Donna 10 relationship, buddies. Well, and that's what I want to say is that I think without, at some level, without Evelyn, we don't get Donna. <laughs> oh yeah, I think because that's fair Evelyn, enough. But Evelyn's a friend. Yeah, it's a mate. I prefer even, the. She's I, a mate. I like a mate with the duck. Those are that's why I like Sarah Jane. That's yep. why I like um, Vicky and the First Doctor. It's a little paternal, but those two they're just little conniving together, and that's yep. when they're yep. Maureen O'Brien and uh, William Hartnell are so good. There's that chemistry, mm -hmm. and I think Evelyn is more like Donna. I think Donna. Of the modern companions, I think Donna, in some ways, is the strongest. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that that, that Donna, without the Doctor, is a shallow person, right? Yeah, I heard a conversation. I'm uh, on flight for entirety, and I forget which one of them. It might have been uh, Brandon brought it up, and it was a good. Um, and I, and I, if I'm misinterpreting it, I'm sorry. And if it wasn't him, I'm sorry. But that. They all, they're all talking about her exit, and it's horrific. 
her at Donna's exit. It is horrific. Yes. And the more I watch it, it is horrific. And all the arguments that you and I have made discussing it, well, he had to do it to save his life, and he doesn't want to. He's traumatized by the act that yes. he's forced yes. to do. Yes. But when she comes back, she's a little different. She's gotten her life together. She's, you know what I mean? She's, she has a partner. It's not because the mm -hmm. partner makes her better. So she's grown with or without the doctor. Doctor, yeah. They, and they make a point, and I think that's a point to be made. Mm -hmm. And I think it is. I don't think it changes, I, you know, and kill the companion, you know, sometimes I'm on, I'm one side. But, but Don, yeah, she, Evelyn's like Donna without the, you know. Without the shallowness. Yeah. Because without the shallowness, yeah. Because she's had a chance to grow, right? And she, <clears throat> she's very caring with this Philip guy, right? She treats him very much like one of her students. Yes. She has a student named Philip, right? And because of the way she treats him, he, spoiler, a bad guy. Yeah, um, and I had forgotten about it when I listened to it this time, man. Yeah, there and you I'm go. Like, oh, well, that's right. He's a bad guy. And she's so disappointed in him. And, it's so and she's just disappointed in him. I oh, well, know that's the best part is because it's the, it's the teacher in her knowing that that's the worst thing she could do is be disappointed. But here's in where him. I'm, I'm going to jump in here because it's making me think this is this is kind of the reverse of Donna with the doctor. She's making Sixie better. Oh yeah, she's a I mean, I think, Don, she, I think Donna makes the doctor better. She does, but you know what I mean. Where she's the like, doctor, get back in there. Yeah, where, where <laughs> you know, where the doctor teaches Donna to take risks, blah blah, or inspires <laughs> her to take risks. I think Evelyn uh, uh, is a humanizing factor on the doctor more so than we've seen in other companions. She, I, she straight up calls him on his shit, and she does it in a kind way, uh, but tells him unflinchingly that he's wrong does Which it is in something a kind Donna way. same thing donna does yeah yeah well yeah. she doesn't necessarily always do it kindly um mm. but yeah. because that's not who donna is but but evelyn is there to teach right same she's reason Clara, a yeah. Clara's a teacher right for the exact same reason that's why <clears throat> yeah clara is on uh capaldi's doctor yeah when he's an ass but, right. And she teaches them like she would her teenage kids right. in her class. This is right. not how we behave. Right. And and but but because Evelyn has has the gravitas, she's also a doctor. She's seen a lot. She knows a lot. And she is more than willing to turn and say, you need to go do this. No, don't don't. Just do it because it's the right thing to do. Don't, it's not, if you don't do it, I'm going to, no, it's the right thing to do. You should go do it. And and he goes and does it, right? Like, but it's, it's just a beautiful relationship. I can't, and this is, I think is, is one of the best examples of it. Cause like I said, it's just a classic Doctor Who story. Yeah. There's, I just love this one so much. I, and everybody, I posted that I was listening to it, and a bunch of our followers said, oh, I love that one. It's a classic. And it is. It is. I think all the Evelyn ones, I don't think there's an Evelyn one I don't really enjoy. I'm kind of looking forward to get to the Pirates one because you and me both were forced to watch Gilbert and Sullivan because <laughs> our moms were that way. <laughs> so, And I don't mind. I like Gilbert and Sullivan. We've actually gone to see – a senior citizen production of Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, thank you. Where oh my the gosh. Who had to have been 80. Um, I have seen some theater in my time. I don't want to say it was bad, but it was like <laughs> me and Vic were just, we kept side-eyed looking at each other like going, I just feel creepy. <laughs> it, was totally, it was one of the creepiest things ever. <laughs> Dear little buttercup or whatever. That wasn't that, that it wasn't Pirates. Um, I can't remember which, now which one it was, but oh, it was like the magician. Um, but the but it was the, hard to tell which one it was. <laughs> but my favorite part that's no, true. My favorite part was that they all had their scripts in hand. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a re, uh, a stage reading almost. Yeah, they all had their scripts in hand, um, except my mother, who kept elbowing her way to the front. So that she could be the most sort of stagey and produced and 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 prove 
that she didn't need no script. <laughs> Horrific. It was horrible. <laughs> so See, that's, a, that's the level of how, the friend I am, is I went and saw her mother. That's exactly <laughs> right. That tells you everything you need to know about who Ross Aiken is, is that he went with me. Um, the <laughs> But she also took me to the doily cart. So I've seen the highest form of Gilbert and Sullivan. And I've seen the lowest point. Yeah, I saw something at Kennedy Center. I think we went and saw the Mikado uh-huh. at the Kennedy Center at some point yeah. in the little theater. Yeah. And high art. But yes, I am looking forward to that. That's, that's a good one, too. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of these, particularly in the early of the main range, because they're frequently standalones. What happens, there's more story, more um, more interaction between the characters, more arcs, right, as there would be um, as we get later, right? Yeah, we get yeah, and it's a, things the, like um, – The apocalypse element. Yeah, and even – who's Thomas, right? Oh hex, yeah, the hex, the 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 the, the Lazar, Tom, Thomas Flip. Brewster, Thomas Brewster, yeah, Thomas, Thomas Brewster. Brewster, and 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 there's a it was Flip, and so there are these story arcs, <clears throat> and so you have to pay a little bit more attention. Yeah, yeah, and they get they and get, these a stories level of confidence. Yeah, no, that's right, that's right, and and they get the. They, I want to say viewership, right? They get their listenership, right? Like they know that they are an ongoing concern, Big Finish. And yeah. so that people will tune in and will and are capable of handling these. But when I'm mowing my lawn, right, When I, which takes me a long time because it's a lot of lawn. Or if I'm, you know, I did part of this story while I was – chainsawing something right like i'm doing stuff while listening it's one of the ways it enables me to do stuff that would otherwise be boring right lots of a lot more physical labor than ever before in my life and so i've um i love to have things in my ears to listen to um and these are really pleasant because i can pick one up and listen to it and then put it down and listen to some other things that are unrelated to Doctor Who. And then I can come back and just listen to one, right? Like there is an arc to Charlie's really the first arc, right? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and but, but the coming up in, in the Evelyn, when they go to, um, when they have project Lazarus, which starts. The right. Arc, yeah. But that's right. a really long arc. It's like it's a they, really long arc, and I found it a little difficult to follow. hold it all together. Yeah. yeah, because yeah, you and it um, it was more like a reoccurring character. In fact, you're watching a TV series, you see this character every year or two in the show, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, and it led to Hex, and they used yeah. it as a thing to tie up Evelyn's storyline when they're mm-hmm. getting toward the end when um, Maggie Staples isn't well, mm-hmm. and. But um, I do the same thing with these. I just listen to them. Sometimes I listen to them walking, walking the dog. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these, some of these are good. Um, and and with Big Finish now is like sometimes I'm like, depending on what type of story and which doctor and how they're doing it. Like um, I just li- I just finished listening to Stranded, and that is the end of the box set era. They are not going to mm-hmm. do those four box set things. They're just going to mm-hmm. do single box sets with three or four stories that are loosely tied together for all the okay. doctors. So they're all like that now. Um, yeah. I just listened to one with Colin called the 11 and it's him and Con- Constance battling the 11. Uh, but there's one story. And the 11 the... is that Mark. Uh, it's Mark Bonner. Bonner. Um, yeah. yeah. And he plays all the personalities. They have yeah. had other actors play the six or the five. I think I can't remember. And the woman who played Miss Marple, Reese most yeah, recently, well, she's uh, the twelve. Yeah. She's the twelve. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <clears throat> and she's a hero. She's not a vi- she's not a villain. But the eleven is a time lord that every time he regenerates, he the voice of the other one is still in its head. It's a form of time lord schizophrenia. Yeah. 
So, um, but they've changed they've changed the formats. But it's I like going back to this format where it is the four episode one, uh, which I mean they just finished stop. I mean they've only that only ended last year. I mean they've only done like two co- two sixth doctors and a fifth doctors and I think one seventh doctor in the mm-hmm. new format of the four story one out forty five minute box set like they're in yeah. Five. So it's neat. I mean, so going back to these, I like listening to some of these early ones. Yeah. Just for that, that it's it there's a there's a literally a now a nostalgia to the big yeah. finish. It's been out so long. And when yeah. people go, there's just too much to listen to. It's like, yeah, but what if, if you're a sixty fan, just get the sixty stuff. Yeah. I mean, if I only had to pick two, I would get the sixty and the eighth. I love Benny. I yeah, love I, Benny. Yeah, I need to really kind of do a deep dive in Benny, but there's so much Benny. There's so much Benny, and a lot of it is when they couldn't, like, a lot of it is when they couldn't have the Doctor, and yeah. so they created a Doctor-like character, but I kind of like her. But anyway, was there anything out of your book that you wanted to really talk uh, about? Hold on one second. Eva's <clears throat> texting me. It's Easter, and Brennan slept until almost 3 o'clock yesterday. So I thought we had all the time in the world, but apparently when you're 14, you still wake up to hunt for Easter eggs. Uh, there are just some notes in here, a couple that Nick's peg, they're elements like I heard, like some from stories in the past. But this is a quote from Gary Russell. Oh, and Gary Russell was awarded at the latest Capital Con, the Terrence Dix Award for Doctor Who writing. The initial uh, uh, Doctor Who Appreciation Society at their convention is now giving out an award named after Terrence Dix, and Gary Russell is the first recipient. Yeah, and well, de- well yeah. deserving. And it's a statue of the master, uh, Delgado, aiming his uh, nice. tissue compression gun. Uh, but there's a quote from uh, Gary Russell I wanted to read. Hold on. I have to give credit to Nick Pegg, who really added to the character of Evelyn here. By putting her in an everyday setting with the Brigadier and by giving her so much spunk and so much guts – intelligence and smarts as far as the story went it was very unit heavy to begin with and i asked for nick to write most of that out but then we ended up having the brigadier so a certain amount had to be put back in i can be the i can be evil like that gary russell (laughs) (laughs) so um, i just love this one these are sometimes some of these ones are uh, just a little you know, it's. You th- I think they're simplistic, but they're not. They're just entertaining as hell. And this honestly, is, this is a if good you've one. never listened to a big finish, and you've always thought about diving in, the, the specter of Lanyon Moore and I, yeah, requires and I, nothing of you except to know, except who the brig is. Oh so yeah. You, if you're an old Who fan, if you have watched old Who, or even just fallen in love with Pertwee via Twitch as so many people have. This would be a pick it up and walk in and you don't need to know anything. Yeah. And it, it's a I would highly recommend it. People and talk I think about these are like cards, I think these are like two ninety nine too. Yeah. They're really it, cheap. And you just get the app and most classic who and is. and I mean if you're gonna do some Marion cons- conspiracy as a pr- a primer, you know, it's a meet a new companion, but you don't even need to have met her. She's a history teacher. Yeah, and it's it's <laughs> worth it. Just try, just go try some of these. Dip in uh, yeah. just with the Evelyn ones. Uh, and yeah. the app is a great app. It's a free app, and just as you buy them, you you got them, and you can put them on and off your phone. Yeah. Whenever you want them, I love it. I do too. They're great, and and this is. Uh, to me, this is just as as warm and comforting as old friends. I used to say to people when I worked at a video store, and they'd be like wandering and wandering, and I'd say, tell me a movie that you wish you'd never seen, and I'll find you something that might be like it, that might make you happy. Mm. Right? Like... That you, a movie that you wish you'd never seen so that you could experience it for the first time again. Yeah. Right? And that's what this one feels like. Like, man, I wish I hadn't consumed all the Doctor Who there was, you know, when watching all of the television programs. Well, yeah. I've got something for you. Here's yeah. something that will that hits all of the marks of a classic Doctor Who story. 
I literally love this one. Yeah, it is. I love all the Evelyn ones. I'm looking forward to more of them. Um, hey, I do want to, um, as we're going to wrap this up, it's going to be a short yeah. episode. Uh, I have a recommendation uh, for coming out. I've just listened to the trailer, and I downloaded the app uh, for C- BBC Sound. It's a free app, and you can listen to most, a lot of it in this country without. Mm-hmm. Some of it is blocked only for UK listening. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Jody's doing, um, Juno Dawson has written a Doctor Who redacted story. It's the first Doctor written by um, her. And it's, uh, the trailer sounds great. It looks great. Uh, I listened. And then I also found uh, an old sci-fi story on there, Sarah, which was very cool. And last night before I went to bed, I listened to a, um adaptation of... A Dickens novel, and I um, uh, can't remember what it is, but it stars Patrick Troughton. Um, uh, and it was a eight part thing. Um, also had um, some other actors I know from Doc Two. It's wonderful. It's a great app. BBC Sounds. It's got uh, radio plays. Some of them are mystery. Some of them are science fiction. It's got The Archers. It's got podcasts. It's a great app. I recommend. Oh, it. Well. The I will tell you, I'm downloading it now, and I will tell you that if um, it has all of the BBC Sounds podcasts, um, then uh, I got a I got a recommendation from our friend Jeff um, while talking about the um, Mary. Uh, talking about the most recent season of Doctor Who, where it's Jody and the Sontarans, and we meet the nurse Mary Seacole. Se- meet Mary Seacole. Um, and uh, Jeff, I said, Jeff, had you ever heard of her? And he said, only because I listened to a podcast, You're Dead to Me. And so I went and downloaded the podcast, You're Dead to Me, which is produced by BBC Sounds. And it's written and hosted by the um, guy who is the head nerd on QI? Horrible Histories. Oh, no, Horrible Histories. Okay. Horrible Histories. And it is um, it's a fantastic podcast. He gets a, um, a historian and a comedian. Okay, you can't play it on the BBC Sounds. It's only available. You can't. No. Well, you can get it on other. You can get it on other podcasts. Yeah, yeah. So I will check that out. It's brilliant. Uh, like my kid just did uh, read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and so we listened to the Lord Byron one, the Mary Shelley one. We still have to listen to Mary Wollstonecraft, who is. Oh, that's Shelley's cool. I may have to one. check that out. The, yeah, what I listened to was uh, Charles. Cl- uh, Chilton Space Force, which is like an old 1950s, mm-hmm. but it's a little more highbrow science where it's just a, it's a it's more like written science fiction than Doctor Who science fiction, mm-hmm. where you can do a little bit. But I listen what the 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 Dickens I listened to was uh, Martin Chuzzlewick and mm-hmm. old Martin was played by Patrick Troughton. That's amazing. And um, I've to, downloaded it and I can't. Uh, that gives me something. It's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's got some. There's a murder mystery starring Annette Badland. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm kind of looking for. So now our next story will be Ghostlight, which is, yes, it's not, and I will say this again, it's not that hard to understand. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm smug. As a Ghostlight lover, there are a lot of us. But it's Ghostlight, and then. Um, we're still deciding on how we do some of the next story, so it's either – it's most likely going to be Neverland, and if not, you may get to hear some of the further adventurists of Charlotte Parlard. But mm-hmm. me and Vic are trying to figure out how to get um, the Dalek Empire parts in uh, and not jump around – not wait for years to do all the parts. We've already done the conclusion, but now we're going to do the other parts. So. Right. Because uh, Apocalypse Element is our next 60 story, so – yeah. But until then, you can remember y'all. Y'all can find us on Twitter at Gallifrey's M W Pod or at Runcible Report, and we look forward to seeing you all somewhere in time or space.